Hi guys, welcome to another video and happy Halloween. Um, I thought about what to do for this special occasion, uh, All Hallows Eve. Um, the problem that I'm having with, with the, the more current videos and more, more recent videos is that it's taking a lot of prep time to get the minis and the terrain ready. So I thought I would try something a little bit different, something that didn't need so much prep work. And I wanted to do something for Halloween, something a little bit special. And I, I, I looked around and I noticed that, I mean, I, I, I'd heard about this game called Four Against Darkness. I've been hearing about this for a while. Um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I have been away from the tabletop hobby for a while because of real life. But um, I have been sort of keeping the ears open and I've, and I've heard a lot of people talking about this uh, Four Against Darkness game by uh, Andrea and uh, Ganesha Games. And I'm familiar with, with Andrea and his work. Um, I mean, I have played Song of Blades and Heroes before, Flashing Steel, Mutants and Death Ray Guns. Song of Drums and Shackos. I mean, I've, I've, I'm well aware of Andrea's work, and I, like I say, I've enjoyed playing those games before. And like I say, I'd, I'd heard about this Four Against Darkness for a while, and um, you know, like a couple of days ago, I kind of just went on to Drive Through RPG and had a look, and found it. <laughs> so I, I got it and printed it out, and I've got it bound up. So this this will be coming soon. But for for Halloween. I thought this wasn't really dark enough, it wasn't really horror enough, that was more fantasy. But I noticed that he had another game, and this one here, called Alone Against Fear. And it's a much more horror-themed game, along the same kind of design as the Four Against Darkness. So when I purchased this one from Drive Through RPG, I actually bought this as well. So I then printed it out, had it bound up. I had it bound up today actually, so I've only I've only had it you know in my hands today. I've I've read through it a couple of times. I think I'm ready to play. And like I say, I want to do this special game for Halloween. Um, and in this game, you are doing missions uh, with the ultimate goal of closing seven Hell Gates. Now, each mission, you may or you may not find a Hell Gate. And to close the Hell Gates, you need to have a, a certain skill and certain equipment. And um, so if, for example, the Hell Gate pops up very early, you may not be ready to actually close it. So the, the missions themselves have different things. You've got to find medicine, you've got to find um, weapons, or you have to hunt a killer. And, and basically you're, you're in this, this town or this city which has been overrun by the supernatural and the evil. So what you will do is you will have one of these uh, town maps, which is basically a grid, and you'll start in one, one spot, and you'll put down the numbers here sequentially as you go through. So maybe, for example, you start here, you write this is your starting space, put the number one, and then maybe you move into the next, uh, the next grid space, you put number two here, and then you would roll on a table to find out exactly what is in that location and it can be many things um, round, random encounter military installations clinics farms streets houses stores sewers there's many many different types of locations so you'd roll on this table and then roll on further tables to find out exactly what's there and there is so much choice and so much variety in this book that you'll never have the same mission twice. You'll never well, you may have the same mission, but you'll never have the same map and location and encounters every time. And you can um, you can do this is like for one mission. You would then do another mission as long as you survive, of course. And then that will come on another map. And what you what you could do is put these together to actually create your city, or you could create your town. Because every mission you're exploring a different area of the town. 
And it's a very neat mechanic. So that's what you're basically doing. You're, you're going to roll up a random mission. But the ultimate goal of the campaign is to close seven Hellgates. And it can take you... I don't know, I mean, from my quick read of the rules, you could find zero Hellgates in a mission. You could find one. You, I think there's a chance you may even find two. But you're not going to find all seven in one in one mission, in one game. So the campaign's going to take a fair amount of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this tonight for Halloween. And depending on how it goes, this may continue into the full campaign. And what that will do, it will actually give me a chance to get the prep work done for the tabletop videos, for the um, miniature games that I'm planning to do. I've done a bunch of videos on Rain in Hell, the demon skirmish game. Um, I'm currently prepping for a campaign of five parsecs from home. And there's a bunch of other games that I want to do after that, but because I've been out of the hobby for a while, I, I need to paint the figures and get the terrain ready um, for those games. So this, the games like this, or even uh, Four Against Darkness, will give me a chance to get everything ready. So this game, from what I've seen so far, I've watched a couple of videos, I've read the rules a couple of times, it looks amazing. But it's, it seems to be an evolution of the old, um, the, 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 the create your own adventure books like Fighting Fantasy or Lone Wolf, where you would create a character and you'd read a passage in the book and it would say, if you want to open the left door, go to this paragraph. If you want to open the right door, go to this paragraph. And then you turn to that page and do what it says. It's like create your own storybooks. I used to play those when I was really young. I, I still remember when Fighting Fantasy was first released, The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Good, good memories of those. But this seems to be an evolution of that. Yeah, these, uh, these games here from Galicia. And there seems to be a lot more variety here. I mean, the, the Final Fantasy books you could do a few times and you could take different paths, but they're very limited in terms of what you could do. But these... These have such variety in the games that you could play this so many times and never do the same thing twice. Never meet the same monsters, never have the same results, never have the same yeah, the same map, the same locations. So I'm excited to play this. Uh, what we'll do first is we will create the character uh, and then we will start the first, um, the first mission for Halloween. Now, in Four Against Darkness, or one of the other four games, four against games, you have a party of four people, or four characters. In this, Alone Against Fear, as the title says, Alone, you are playing solo with one character. And the characters don't have um, classes or races. You're basically a human, just a standard human. And you're trying to find weapons and you're trying to you know, solve puzzles and, and find things. But yeah, this is very, very exciting. So the game's very simple by the looks of it. You have two stats. If we look at the character sheet here. Sanity and life. Mental health. Physical health. Um, you will have a number of skills. You, I think you get two skills to begin with. Now, you can choose the skills, but I'm thinking that I might do them randomly. Uh, you also start off with um, I think two weapons, a knife and another weapon that you have to roll randomly. It may come with ammo. And then arcane skills, these are more sort of magic or paranormal in nature, but these ones you can't get at the start. You need to read books, you need to get um, the ability to learn these from other places within the missions, within the game. You need food. Um, the standard thing is that every five spaces that you move to or you explore, you have to consume one food. Yeah. So keeping track of food and finding food is going to be very in, you know, useful as well. Candles can be used with certain arcane skills to do different, um, have different effects. And books, you can find magical books or other books that will allow you to have uh, or allow you to learn arcane skills. So yeah, it's, it's a very simple game. 
Uh, so let's 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 start with let's start with our character. Go to the thing. Okay, we must see the introduction. All hell breaks loose. No one knows for sure how it started. Maybe some occultists played with forces they could not control, or maybe the end times are really upon us. All you know is that there are monsters and madness in the streets. All communication systems and media have broken down. There is no internet, no mobile phones, no TV. Some people say there is a community of survivors just out of town. Others say these communities are just traps and are as infested by demons and zombies as the city streets. You need weapons, food and water. Driving is not safe. Moving in the streets attracts the attention of the horrors and there are gremlins who apparently can control vehicles and cause them to crash. So you will have to walk. All you have is your wits a weapon and a desire to stay alive. Oh, what a nice positive game. So we are going to create a character and then we are going to start the first mission. A uh, little bit about the dice rolling. Basically the game revolves around 2d6 or two six-sided dice in various combinations. D3, D6, D6 plus whatever, 2D6, D6 times D6. And there's also D66, where basically you roll and you read it as like um, tens and units. So for example, if red is the tens, that would be uh, 44. <laughs> Try again. That would be 52 or 52. So that's how you'd read this. And the, the reason why this is so simple is that you have target numbers. When you have a monster to fight, you're trying to roll its level or higher. When you are trying to defend, you are trying to roll its level or higher, the monster. There will be saves or times where you need to use skills. And again, <clears throat> the game will give you this level that you have to roll or higher as your target number. But one thing that's important is here. Rolling a one is always a failure. Rolling a six is always a success. Now. This game also has what we call exploding dice. Where did I see that? Now, exploding dice are not, it's not something new. Uh, we used to have this in Savage Worlds as well when I used to demo uh, Savage Worlds. Basically with, um, with exploding dice, when you roll a natural six uh, before modifiers, you can roll another dice and add it to the result. So if I rolled a six, I can then roll another dice and add it to the result. So I would get a total of eight. If I rolled another six, I can roll again and again and again and add, keep adding them and adding them and adding them. Like I say, this is nothing new. It's been in Savage Worlds for a long time. But it's a, it's a decent mechanic and it may give me a chance of surviving against vampires and monsters and zombies and everything else. Uh, however, there is there is one concern on a defense roll when you're defending against a monster. If you roll a one, you have to roll again. And if the second dice is also a one, you take an additional point of damage. You can skip your next attack or destroy your main weapon. This isn't good at all. I don't remember this in Savage Worlds. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you've also got surprise. There is a chance with certain encounters it will tell you whether there's a chance you surprise them or whether they surprise you. If things get too bad, you can try to escape. Again, the target number is the monster's level. It's all based on the levels. There's target numbers for just these dice. It's very, very simple. So yeah, um, lots and lots. Again, this book, I think is about 100 pages, but the thing is that most of it, let's have a look. Starting from I think here to about there. This is all tables. This is the rules and information, and this is all tables. It's a lot of tables. If you don't like rolling dice on tables, then this is not the game for you. But I, I like it. I like it a lot. So let's let's roll up our our first character and see how we do. So the good little contents here. Your character, page nine. Page nine, your character. Okay, give your character a name and create a mental image of him or her. 
If nothing comes to mind, just think of a character from your favorite TV series or movie. All right, so who should we have? I think I will name my character. I think I want to go for a female. Let's, let's call her Dot. Short for Dorothy, Dot. So XP, we don't get any to start with. XP we will earn as we kill monsters. Every encounter we, we survive and we kill the monsters, we get one XP. Certain uh, tough creatures will give me two. Uh, now, for Sanity and Life, they start at eight each, but we have three extra points to distribute. Uh, I do have the option of sacrificing those three points to get one additional skill or an additional roll on the random weapon table. I, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna... I'm going to use the three points. So, eight, eight. I think I'm going to start with. Let's do nine and ten. Yeah, that'll do to start with. Now, it says here two skills of your choice, not arcane skills. Now, again, I think, just to make it a little bit fun, I think I'm going to use the random skill generation table. Now this comes in one of the quick reference sheets at the back here. So let's let's see who let's see how this goes. So uh, roll d6 for each skill on a one to two roll on table one on a three to four roll on table two on a five or six roll on table three. Okay so my my first skill is a three so that means I'm rolling on table two and I get Five occultist. Okay. Second skill is three again and five again. What the hell? Okay, I can't have the same one, can I? I don't know if I can have the same one. Let's do another one. Then. Two. What the hell? Three times in a row. Two. Okay, skill table one. And six, faith or will. Now, faith or will. I need to check what those are. Let me, let me have a quick look. So we've got occultist. Do, do, do. Occultist is here. You have plus one to any magic roll. Plus one, two, magic rolls. Occultist is also useful for closing gates and for doing some arcane arcane skill. If I remember correctly, uh, yeah, so one way you can close the gate, uh, one way to gain this skill, this, the skill gate, to actually close the gate is to have the occultist skill and spend five clues. Clues are things you can pick up. So I already have one step towards getting this arcane skill which can allow me to close gates later. So, okay, I'll close this. Now, the other choice was faith or will. Okay, will. Add one to your will rolls and saves versus fear, magic, hypnotism, or psionics. Okay, oh, you'll notice there's two levels, basic and expert. You can't start with expert, but you can um, boost them. You see here, this is the number of experience you need to either gain it or to boost from normal to, to expert. Uh, plus one to will rolls, or what was the other one? Faith. You may attempt to turn vampires with a holy symbol. It works like exorcism. You automatically begin the game with a holy symbol if you take this at character creation. If you learn, if you learn it during the game, you must find a holy symbol before you can use it. I think I'm going to use faith. I mean, this gives me a, a boost for will rolls. This allows me to turn vampires, attempt to turn vampires, and I start with a holy symbol. Let's take faith. Turn vampires, and I start with Where's, where do I keep equipment? Oh, here. Arcane skills go here, equipment is here. Okay, so I have a holy symbol. Now, if I spend another two, X, two XP, 
I can boost this to expert level when I get plus one to the attempts. Okay, sweet, nice, nice, nice. Right, those were my two skills. Now, again, if I die horribly, I'll blame the uh, I'll blame the random skills if I die hor horribly. <laughs> Okay, one weapon from the random weapon table and one knife. So we have a knife. Now the knife, knife or stick, minus one to attack rolls. You can pick up a stick every time you visit a stick. You may pick up a stick every time you visit a stick. Doesn't make sense. Okay, minus one to attack. So the knife, minus one to attack rolls, so the knife's crap. And I have to roll one, let's get me bookmark, so I don't lose me place. Uh, one weapon from the random weapon table, page 21. Page 21, random weapon table, it's a D6, okay. I get a two, chainsaw or authentic samurai sword. Well, let's have a look and see. The chainsaw, two-handed, plus one to attack, damage two. At the end of any combat, roll a one in six chance that the noise attracts D6 zombies. Level three, slow undead. Okay, slow uh, means that you can escape and they won't chase you. Uh, otherwise, you can actually get attacked as you try to escape. Okay, two-handed, plus one to attack, rolls, damage two. What was the other one? Authentic samurai sword, katana. Maybe use two handed plus one to attack, or one handed, no bonus, damage one. Hmm. Well, I mean, the chainsaw looks a lot more deadly, but it has the chance it's going to attract D6 zombies. And knowing my luck, every time I bloody use it, I'm going to get six zombies attacking me. I think I'll go with the samurai sword just to play safe. So we have a. Samurai sword. Authentic. Okay, so two handed gives me plus one to attack. One handed plus zero attack. Dum dum, damage one, that's standard. Alright, sweet. Cheap replica break. Okay. And then weapons up here, I have a knife and a. Samurai sword. So I've got no ranged weapons, yeah. Just melee. Alright, okay. Do do do. What's next? One item from the random objects table and one from the useful stuff table. Okay, page 23. Uh, random objects. Okay, random objects. So this is a D66. So I'll have red first, we get 2, 4, 24, 2, 4, hammer, another weapon. Used to nail down doors and windows and to drive stakes through the hearts of vampires, it may also be used as a weapon. One of the weapon stats, it's not there is it, it's here. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Plus one to hit zombies and flaming skeletons, damage one. Okay. So, plus one attack versus zombies. Not just, not just skeletons, but flaming skeletons. Let's move our lighting. And we have a. So we've got three melee weapons. Hmm. Okay, so that was the random object. And one from the useful stuff, page 26. Useful stuff. So again, D66, we get 21 or 2-1. Martial arts handbook. Reduced by one XP the cost for learning the martial arts skill. No reduction on martial arts skill expert. Okay, so martial arts skill. What? That more melee. Where is it? 
martial arts. So it normally costs 3 XP, so with this it reduces by 1 XP the cost for learning. Reduced un unarmed combat modifier to minus 1. Oh. Unarmed is normally minus 2. Minus 1 with martial arts. Okay, that will cost me 2 XP instead of 1 XP. Um, yeah. So books, red, it's a handbook, I'll, I'll say it's a book. Martial arts handbook. Not sure what I did there. So minus one XP to learn martial arts. Okay. What else? What else? What else? What else? Do do do. Food. You start the food. Start the game with D6 food. Every five boxes you cross. Yes, yeah, so every five boxes we cross on here. I've got to consume one food. If I don't, I lose one life. All right. So D6 food. Four. So I start with four. Food. No candles. Uh, you can carry up to a maximum of 10 food points with you, up to 15 if you have a backpack. Count of food is separate from carried items. Okay, so carried items, how much can I carry? 10. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Is the holy symbol negligible? Or does it actually weigh something? Negligible. Okay. So I'm currently carrying three items and four food. And I have occultist and faith as my skills. So Dot is a bit of a religious girl, but a vampire hunter. Or ghost hunter. Nice. Anything else? Or is that it? You gain experience. Okay, so you receive one XP every time you win a combat encounter. So it's not per monster you kill. It's every encounter. So if I, if I move into a... If I move into a spot here, and there are six zombies, I only get the one XP if I kill all six. Okay, okay. If you run away, you don't get any XP. Right. Okay. So is that it? Leaving stuff at home when you visit a safe house. You can leave any other items there, okay. I think that is all we need to do. For character creation, useful stuff, spells, combat. Okay, so when you do combat, you roll d6, adding any modifiers, and divide the total by the monster's level. The result is the number of damage points you inflict. So you attack a level 3 monster, your dice roll is a 4, you add plus 2 due to your weapon, your total is 6. So 60 divided by 3 is 2, 2 damage. Okay, so that's the target number. 3 is the target number. You've got to roll a 3 plus to actually hit the thing. But any mul but multiples of 3 will then do more damage. So 6 will do 2 damage and 9 will do 3 damage. Okay. If you attack a group of monsters with 1 life point each, each damage point kills one of them. Or if they have 2 life points each, I would need to do 4 life to kill both of them. Okay. When it's the monster's turn to attack, only the monsters that survive your attack have a chance to hurt you. Okay, sweet. Some weapons inflict more than one point of damage. In the case, every hit. Okay, okay yeah. Keep track of ammo. Exploding dice. Such a pretty eye. Surprise, charisma, mental scars. Yeah, mental scars. Um, when you lose sanity, you may prevent that sanity loss by rolling on the sanity table. You may do up to three times. Same for life. Yeah, so if you get to a stage where losing sanity or life may actually cause you to die or lose the game, what you can do is you can choose to not take that damage from that attack and instead roll on this table. This one for sanity, this one for, for life. And you get one of these impairments. Um, these are permanent. Even if you have an ability to heal, like for example with first aid or whatever, medic, 
uh, you won't heal these back. But I think some of the some of the injuries can actually be healed back by some things in the in the game. But the insanity, I, I don't think it can. So when you go back to um, when you finish the mission and stuff, all your health, all your life is healed back, and all your sanity is healed back. But these things stay with you, unless you can find a way to get rid of them. But as soon as you have three of these or three of these, then you basically are out of the game. You you can't function anymore. Okay. Movement. <clears throat> okay, so when you enter a new box, when you enter a box, roll on the town exploration table, which I actually printed out separate on a piece of card because I'm going to be using this every time. So I don't want to be keep turning to that page in here. So you roll on here for every time you enter a new box. And you see what's in there. Sometimes there's nothing, sometimes there is something. Moving through visited areas. You may move through boxes you've already visited and you can search them. Okay, so you can search a box after an encounter or if there's nothing there. If you go back to a box box area that you've already been, you have to roll for a random encounter, one in six. If you then defeat that encounter, or if there's nothing there, you can search if you haven't searched already. So searching, you roll on here, a one, roll on a random encounter, and a one's a one. Modifiers won't affect that. Two to five, nothing, six, success. Roll four times on the useful items table or on the random object table and pick a single result. Or, Roll on the random book table if you were in a library or gain one clue. Okay. Random encounters are ugh, ish. Okay. Oof. And then these are the missions. So like I said, the actual goal of the campaign is to close seven Hellgates. And you I mean it's gonna be more than seven missions probably. But each mission has a specific objective, a mission thing that we have to do. Uh, find medical supplies, hunt like a serial killer, find food, find weapons, uh, defeat five witches, or close a hell gate. Now they do give options, for example, if you go through the entire map and you don't find anything, it does actually give you options in terms of uh, if you don't find by the 30th box, you, know, you find the gate. Um, you will automatically meet a witch in any of the last five locations that you visit on your town map. Uh, but if you did not discover them by spending clues, they will have the five minutes inside of surprising you. So I mean, they're, they're, it's basically, they're, they're, there's ways around it. You won't, you won't find that you can't complete the mission because of bad rolling. Uh, it will give you the opportunity. You can still screw it up by dying and whatever, but it gives you, it gives you the opportunities. Town, so this is, the, this is the one that I printed out because I'll be using it all the time. And then here you have the specific tables of what you can find, locations and random events and items and loot and everything else. I don't want to, don't want to read these yet. I want to keep these. I haven't, I haven't looked through those. So I have absolutely no idea what's going to be in the in the town. What's going to be in these places? I haven't looked at any of these tables whatsoever. Even the ones just now. The um, where was it? Sorry, my nose is bad today. Uh, the useful stuff and also the random is it random items, random objects. I, I didn't actually look at these tables. I wanted it all to be a complete surprise. So I have my character. I have my character, Dot. She has her stuff. She is ready to go. She has four food. Now we need a mission. The mission is four. We need weapons. So the first mission, we need weapons. And this is mission. God, how many S's in mission? Should know this. Mission number one. So we need weapons. You must explore the town and bring back to your starting box firearms. When you do so, you gain 1 XP per every firearm with at least 6 ammo 
with a maximum gain of 5 XP. You may alter the town exploration role by plus or minus 1 if this lets you reach a military installation or a store. Obviously those are places where you're more, more likely to find weapons. All the weapons and ammo that you deliver are given to other survivors at the end of the mission, but you may use them during the game. Firearm. I mean, I couldn't even sacrifice some of my weapons because I haven't got any firearms. I've got a knife, a hammer, and a samurai sword. All right. So, mission one, we need to hunt down some weapons and possibly close some hell gates if I can get... If I can get the ability to learn, what was that arcane skill? Gate, was it called? Gate, yeah. Right. Right. So we need weapons. We will start. Where shall we start? We shall start up here. So this is going to be my starting box. Oh, you do not have to roll for content for the first box. Okay, so we're starting here. This is my starting location, and this is box number one. So we are going to have to consume one food for every five boxes that I move through. Now I do have... Move that out of the way. Don't need that anymore. I'll be writing down because I don't think there's going to be a lot of space to write stuff here. So if there's anything inside these boxes that need a bit more space, I will write them down here. For example, like monsters, I'll probably write down the stats of the monsters here. Okay. Okay, so characters created. We have our mission. We need weapons. This is my starting position. I am ready to go. So join me in the next video where we will start our campaign. Happy Halloween.